I was asked one time in a job interview if I preferred static classes or the singleton design pattern. And I'm going to discuss the differences in this video. We're going to see the singleton. It's probably the easiest design pattern there is. Uh, and we're also going to compare it against these static classes. Let me actually make this static again. And um, let me build, just make sure we're building. I, I'm going to try not to rant and rave about the fact that static classes are not an instance of the class. Right? They, they're not an instance of an object, it's just static data. I've proven to you out in memory that static data is just there from the beginning of the program all the way to the end and uh, that sort of thing. So we're not creating one instance of a class. The singleton design pattern creates one instance of a class. But what we're doing with static classes are not creating an instance of the class. Right? It's still memory. In fact, it's the exact same amount of memory except with an instance. We have that extra data I've shown in like 10 videos ago, but no big deal. Right? It's still memory. It's just one is in static memory and then the other actually goes out on the heap. If I use the singleton design pattern, then it goes out on the heap. Right? Now, let me tell you what the singleton design pattern is. We call it singleton. Single for a reason. We're, we're, we're creating one instance of the class. And we only want one instance to exist always and forever. If you notice here with this logger, it kind of makes sense. I, I, I want to say logger dot log message log message. And you can imagine me having tons and tons of code. And at the beginning I say initialize. Then all throughout my code I have all these log 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 log. And then at the end before I terminate I say hey shut down logging. Okay, you, you, you can see that. And you've seen it. You've probably used it several times with console. We say console write line all over the place even though we shouldn't. We do. It's this globally accessible thing. It's static. All right? Well, with the singleton design pattern, same idea. We want this globally available one object, uh, but we actually want an instance of it. Now, why would we want an instance of it? I don't know. <laughs> Everything you can do with a singleton, you can do with static data. You just... The, the semantics are a little different. you got to write the code with static all over the place, but really it's truly a design pattern. So when I was asked in my interview whether I preferred singletons over static data or not, or, you know, they're asking my opinions, my religious opinions. I, I try to give intelligence answers and, and back those intelligent answers up. Let me try to do that here in this video. I'm going to convert this logger to a singleton, meaning I'm going to be able to instantiate it. I only want to be able to create one instance of it, and everything in here is no longer going to be static. Static, it's going to be instance, right? Control K D. I think we're good. Public, public. All right, we're still private here. That's good. And then, oh, look, now I can no longer say logger dot anymore. I, I, need, I need to create an instance, all right? Well, what I don't want happening, and this is one reason why we use the singleton design pattern, I don't want people to be able to explicitly create their own loggers, all right? I, there's only should be one logger, and it's going to write to the file, and I don't want ten loggers trying to overwrite and step on each other's toes writing out to the log file. Just one logger, one instance. So, yes, I want to be able to create an instance. Thus, I had to take the word static off of my class. But I want to take control of who and how this instance is created. Okay, well, it's, it's actually pretty straightforward. I'm going to make the constructor here, and I'm going to take public off of it. All right, I hope you're at high definition, because I am using some very small fonts. I have a constructor. It is now private. I could be explicit and say private, but I know the classes default to private, and I don't like to type stuff. I don't, I don't like to type and read stuff that I don't need to. Uh, let me try to build this, and we're going to say, hey, um, um, you can't create a logger, Jamie. Uh, you're, you know, it's private constructor. I'm sorry, Jamie. Okay, well, then who's going to create the instance? Right. We need at least one. We need one instance of this law. Who and how is that going to be created? Well, I'll tell you how it's going to be created. I'm going to say static logger. And this is the only thing that will be static inside this class. Static logger, the instance, gets new logger. Look at that. I created the instance right there. Okay, and I can, I can call the constructor because I am inside the class. And being inside the class, I can see everything in the highlighted area right here, meaning I can access this private constructor, and I can instantiate the logger. So there you go. I created the, the logger right there. And now all I need to do is provide access to this logger to anyone who wants to use it. Okay? I don't want you creating your own logger, but I'll, I'll create it. You can access it all you want to, though. Go feel free. 
feel free. Well, probably the best way to do that is, is either with a method or a property. This is C-sharp, so I'll use property as well. Say static logger the instance. Okay, and we'll do a get here, and I'll say get. Uh, return the instance, like so. And, and now I can say, hey, logger dot, oh, is it not public? i got to make it public. Public. Okay, logger dot the instance dot initialize. Logger dot dot the instance dot log message. Logger dot alt drag dot the instance dot log message. And then let's get rid of this. This is illegal. We know that. Control shift B, build. Build succeeded. We're good. We're good. Okay, so having done that, we finally have our singleton. We've taken control of construction here. And we allow people to access that instance, but it is the only and true instance. This almost sounds religious, doesn't it? Now, what do you think I said in my interview when they said, do you prefer singletons or do you prefer static classes? Well, with the singleton, now I have to say logger dot the instance dot, 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 and I also have to take control and actually instantiate one of these things and grant access to the one instance and what do you think I answered in the interview? <laughs> I don't know if I answered what they were looking for. I don't. I, I, I guess I should care, but I think this is a pain. All right, I I don't. That's just more I have to type and maintain, and I just want to say dot and go. Okay, the console isn't a singleton. Console is a static class, and there's there are lots of static classes in the .NET framework. In fact, rarely do I ever bump across an actual singleton in the built-in .NET framework. So anyway, now I'm ranting and I'm soapboxing. Before I leave this, it's kind of nice that I'm showing you the singleton pa design pattern. I want to show you some twists on this. I could not get so eager here. This is what's called eager or greedy, maybe. It's eager initialization, meaning, meaning let's let's create the instance there and say there was a ton of stuff in logger and all this setup and blah, 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 blah. What? And, and then say we never use the logger. Maybe it's some deep, dark, hidden class that nobody knows about, nobody cares about, and yet it's taking up overhead at runtime. Do I really want to eagerly chew up all those resources? Eh, if I'm not being, if I, if I don't think I'm going to be used that often, I shouldn't be eager and just say, hey, hey, give me some room, give me some room, give me some room. I should say, you know what, if you need me, I'll be there for you. But otherwise, I'll just be a four-byte reference out here. Okay, well, obviously I'm going to return null here because the default for this will be null. So in my get, I actually have to write a little bit of logic here and say, if the instance is not created yet, the instance gets new logger, like so. This is called lazy loading. We are being lazy about loading. We're not being greedy anymore. We're saying, oh, if you need it, I'll load it up for you. Otherwise, whatever. So the first time you call this, you might, you'll, you could take a little time hit if, if the constructor for logger was more expensive than what I had here. Uh, but otherwise, I'll just return the instance. And now, every time I call this property, I'm also doing this check here, but the check's cheap, so yada yada yada.